What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech, and today we're going to be talking about setting up Open Media Vault 7 on Proxmox. So it's just another way to set up a NAS on your Proxmox server, so you can share some files, and they also have features to add on, additional plugins, and we'll cover some of that during this video, so let's get right into it. The first thing we just want to talk about is the prerequisites for Open Media Vault. So I did cover this a little bit last week on the Zemo Blade video. Open Media Vault is pretty simple when it comes to hardware wise, you only need about a gig of memory, you need about 4 gigs of storage per the OS, and then of course you do need your drive for your data on your NAS share, but other than that it's not too picky, so we're going to build out the machine with fair resources to use this. I'm just going to come over here to the download site, and I'm going to copy this link, and we're going to come over to our Proxmox node, and I'm just going to upload the ISO this way to make it a little bit easier. So we're just going to do download from URL, we'll query it, and then we'll download it. So I'm just going to do this, and we'll be right back when this is all done. We can see that the OS is finished downloading, says task OK, so we're going to start working on that. So we are working on the Barmine Tech server today, which is our server that we've been working on for about a year and a half now. It has pretty basic specs, so it will work just good to use this. We're going to come over to the top right corner, we're going to click create VM, and then over here is how we're going to start making our open media vault. So I'm just going to name it OMV, you can name it whatever you want, I'm going to click next, I'm going to tell it where the ISO is, so you can see over here it's Open Media Vault 7.0-32, uh, I'm going to click that, and other than that we'll, we'll move on to the next, I'm going to leave all those defaults, over here we can give it storage, so I'm going to give it 25 gigs on the LVM just to have for the disk, this is also to account for if we have maybe additional plugins or anything else on top of the config. That's why I'm going to give it 25 gigs. And then on top of here, we're going to click add. And this is where we're going to add our other drive. So you can see over here, I have a SCSI 0 and SCSI 1. SCSI 1 is going to be our disk that we're going to be using for the actual NAS share. So this one's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to come over here to LVM. And you can see over here, I have about 320 gigs available. I'm only going to give this NAS about 100 gigs. You can give it whatever you want available off your drive. I'm just working with the, hard the hardware that I have. Now I'm going to click next. I'm going to keep it at one core because that's fine for me. And I'm going to keep it at two gigs of RAM because that works too. The networking will stay the same. We'll confirm it. And then we'll just give it a second to load up before we start. So now we can see that my machine initialized, and if I come over here, I can just look at the basic specs. So I have one core, two gigs, 25 gig boot disk. And if I click on hardware, we can see we actually have the two hard drives, and we'll be able to use the second one for our NAS share. So now we should be all good, so I'm just going to right click on it. I'm going to open up a console. We're going to start up the machine, and now we're going to start the actual setup of the Open Media Vault. So you can see over here we have the boot menu, so I'm just going to come over here to click install. The install is a pretty simple process, it just goes through a whole bunch of menus asking you different questions. So I'm going to select my language, my region, my keyboard that I want to use, and now it's going to start loading through. So I'm going to let this load through the setup, and when we get to the next set of menus, I'll be right back. So we just got to the first menu since the install is set up, and it's going to be uh, entering your host name. So the default is Open Media Vault, but if you want to change it, you can. I'm going to leave it at Open Media Vault. We're just going to hit tab and continue. The next one will be the domain. I'm going to leave this the same as well because I don't have a domain to use. So I'm just going to click continue. Now we're going to be setting the password for the root account. So this is important to remember this. Now this root account will be the account to SSH into the box. It won't be actually set to access the GUI. But you'll still need to know this password as well. So I'm just going to type in a password. And it's going to have you double check it. I'm just going to hit continue again. Now over here it's going to select your time zone. I'm in Eastern, so I'm going to select that. And we're just going to start going through again. And now here we are, it sees the second hard drive. So now this is where it's going to ask which hard drive we want to install the OS onto. So I'm going to click continue. And now over here you can see we have our two hard drives. Now I believe because of how the virtualization, the QEMU agent works, that's why it sees the hard drives as a little bit different versus what I actually said size wise. But I'm going to use the first one, which is the smaller hard drive. So I'm just going to click enter on it. Now I'm going to let this keep going and we'll be back when we have more menus. 
Okay, and the installer is continuing, and now it's just asking for my region again. So we could have a backup mirror of the installer, I guess. So I'm just going to click United States. And over here, I'm just going to click the mirror for the Debian archive. So I'm just going to click the first one because it works fine for me. Now, if we're using a proxy, we'd enter it here. I'm not using a proxy, so I'm just going to click continue. And we're just going to let this keep going, and we'll be back again when there's more menus. Okay, and now we're going to get to our final menu, which is just saying that it's all done, and it needs to reboot the system, so that's fine, so I'm going to click continue to reboot. And it's going to make some SSH keys, I guess. So we're going to let this finish up, the machine will probably reboot, and we'll be right back when we're set to actually load into our Open Media Vault. Okay, so the machine rebooted, and you can see over here that it's loaded into Open Media Vault, because I have my host name. And what's nice is it provides the IP address right over here so we can actually start going right to that and start working. So I'm just going to go over to 192.168.50.113. Now your IP is going to be different, so make sure you note whatever's shown over here and go to that IP address. The default login is admin and the password is open media vaults. It is quite a long password, so we're definitely going to want to change that. So I'm going to come over to user settings. We're going to do change password. And so this is going to be changing the password for the admin account. So just keep that in mind. We're going to click save. And then, of course, I like to log out and test the password. So I'm going to click log out. I'm going to do admin. And then I'm going to type in my new password. And that works. So that's all good. The second thing we're going to do is come over here and we're going to click on the little user settings and we're going to put this in dark mode so that's all good. The first thing we're going to do is come over to system over here on the left and we're going to go into move over to updates. So we're going to click update management, updates, and there are quite a few updates. So I'm just going to install these really quickly and I recommend that you do before you really get into working. So just let this run. It only takes a minute or so, so just let the machine get up to date and then we can actually start working on getting the system configured all right and after the updates run it's going to say end of line so we're all good we can hit close and it's going to refresh and the only thing that's a little annoying about open media vault is every time after you make changes it's going to give you this yellow box saying pending changes and then you could have to hit apply so if you do updates you're going to have to do this if you add a new user you're going to have to do this if you you know make any config changes that's how it's going to be. So just be aware that every time you attempt to make a change, you're going to have to hit the append changes and go from there. So now that we have our machine all up to date, now we can actually start working on it. So if we come over to storage, we should be able to come to disks and we can see our disk. So over here, you can see my 100 gig drive that I added and you should see whatever you have. And we're just going to come over here and I'm going to make sure that my drive is selected. It'll be yellow. I'm going to click wipe and it's going to just wipe the drive to make sure everything's fresh and ready. There shouldn't be anything on it since it's a brand new virtual disk I gave it. But just to be sure, I'm going to do quick because it's pretty quick. Uh, I tried secure and it was quite a bit of time. So I'm just going to let this run. It's going to wipe the disk and you see it's already actually done. So I'm just going to click close. So now we should be ready to start working. So now we can come over to file systems. And now we can actually make that disk into a file system. So I'm going to hit create. I'm going to do ext4. You can select whichever one you want. And then over here you can see there's my drive again. So I'm going to click save. And now it's going to make out the file system. So we can actually start using that drive as a file system to be used on a share. So it's a few steps to get this going in Open Media Vault, but it works. So now we have our file system, and I can select it again, and I'm going to click Save. And now over here you can see that we have an ext4 file system running on dev sdb, and it would be sdb1 because that's the partition off of it now. And again, you see we have pens and changes, so I'm just going to click Apply. So I'm just going to let these settings apply, and then we'd be good to continue on. Okay, so now the sentence applied. So just to go through what we did. So I took my disk dev sdb. I came over to file systems and we pretty much made it into dev sdb1. And we made it a usable file system now. 
And now the next step is going to be coming over to shared folders and making a shared folder. So we're just going to come over to shared folders. I'm going to click the plus button to create. And now we're going to call it something. So I'm just going to call it Sherry. And now over here you can see our file system is here and it's ready to be used. So if you do come over here and when you click on this drop down for file system, you don't see anything. Go back to the previous steps and make sure that everything's done. Make sure you have your disk ready. You have the file system made and everything like that. And then you should be able to access it no problem in here. So the file path is set automatically. And then over here, we're going to have the pretty much the access to it. So over here, you can set if you want only administrator access to the file share, or if you want everybody to be able to access it. So I'm going to do everyone read write. You set it how you want it for your environment. So I'm going to click save. And now over here, we can see that we have our share and we're just going to apply these changes. So now that we have our share set, we're actually going to enable the services like SMB so Windows can whack whack to it or access it remotely. So we're going to come over to services. I'm going to come over to SMB CIFS. If you prefer to use NFS because you're on a different OS, that's fine. But I'm going to use SMB and we're going to come over to shares and we're just going to click create. So now we can select our share folder, which is Sherry. So now we can set some of the options. So we could do if guest allowed, I'm going to say yes can be allowed. It's fine for me. This is all internal and I have nothing important on the share at the moment, but make sure that you read through these steps a little more carefully and set it how you are. If you're going to be putting important information or anything else on here over here, you can just set any of the other options. So like time machine support, encryption, ACLs, you can put a recycle bin in there. So if you delete a file out of the share, you don't lose it right away. Other than that, we should be all good. And I'm just going to click save. So now we actually have SMB running on the share and we'll just apply these one more time and we'll check this out in a minute. Okay. So I was testing this out and it wasn't working and sometimes open media vaults a little counterintuitive. So we did enable all the settings in SMB, but I forgot to actually enable SMB. So just come back over here on the left and click SMB and then we can click settings and you gotta click enabled. And this is why if you were trying to connect, it wasn't working and this is why it wasn't working for me. So we're just going to click save. We're going to apply the config and now we should be able to connect. No problem. One more thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a user to access it before we try to attempt to access the share. We're just going to make a user because the admin account is a little funny when it comes to accessing your shares. So we're just going to come over to users. We're going to click users and then we're going to come over to the plus button. We're going to create. So I'm just going to make out a user really quick. We're going to set a password. Confirm my password. And now we're going to select the groups. This will be the access to what this user will have. So I'm going to give myself root, Samba share, staff. I'm just going to pretty much give myself all the big ones. So there should be a users. I think there's an admin at the top. But I'm just going to give all of these. So these are the important ones that I believe I have. Yeah, here you go. Open media vault admin config. So I'm just going to do all of these. Of course, you could change these as you need, but I'm just going to do this. So I have no issue accessing the share. So we're just going to apply these and then we should be good to finally access our share. So it does take a few minutes to get this going, but it's just because open media vault's a little counterintuitive when it comes to actually getting the share set up. Okay, so I guess somewhere along the line with my config, I messed up and I'm not sure if anybody else is going to be having this issue, but all I did was come back here and public, I changed it to guest allowed and now I'm able to access my share. So if I hit run again, I can just take the IP and now you can see here Sherry and here we are in the Sherry folder. So now we actually can access the share and if you're interested in mounting it to your Windows machine, you can. But now that the share is actually working and if we come over here to just add a folder, you can see we can actually write to it and that works. So the SMB share is actually working. So that covers that. So I'm just going to close some of that stuff out. Now we can talk about some of the other stuff that's available in open media vault. So we can come over to system and you can see they actually have plugins. So plugins is where you can kind of get some extra stuff added on top of it. So it does support extra features. Like I know there used to be a WireGuard plugin. There's like, looks like one, uh, one drive sync. Like you can come in here, here's Podman. So I, I believe that open media vault doesn't support Docker, 
but it does stuff like Kubernetes or maybe Podman if you want to look into doing stuff like that. I'm not really going to go over installing this today because I don't want to make this video way too long, but this is an extra way you can add on some additional plugins. I'm not familiar if there's like third party plugins made or anything extra, but I bet if you guys take a look and you're interested, you could find some extra stuff if you wanted. But other than that, that is Open Media Vaults. Uh, I know some of my directions kind of went in a circle, but I like to make sure stuff works as I go over it. So yeah, that's how to set up Open Media Vault 7. So that's just how you set up Open Media Vault on Proxmox. This is currently the latest version, which is 7. And it's just how we set up on Proxmox. I know some people like to run it on a bare metal machine. Some people like to virtualize their NAS. But this is just an option of how to do it in Proxmox. I want to thank you all for watching. As always, I'll have all the links to all gear in my home lab below. I'll have a link to the Discord server if you guys wanted to check that out. And as always, I want to thank you all for watching. And I will see you in the next video.